<laughs> Let's start with uh, Texans receiver Stephon Diggs. He got Woo. the last laugh uh, in a revenge game against the Bills. Uh, they got they actually got lucky um, to survive that game, which was a crazy game. Uh, Diggs and the Bills Bills quarterback Josh Allen downplayed the storylines around uh, the separation of those two. Uh, after the game, Diggs said this one meant something to him. Well, obviously playing my old team, um, I'm not going to sit here and act like it was just regular. You know, it meant a lot to me. And, the, and it was reassuring that the guys around me knew that it meant a lot to me, even if I didn't say it, you know, because I try to just keep it poised or treat every week like it's the same. You know, I like the fact that Stefan Diggs was totally authentic there and admits, yeah, it did mean a lot to me. I love that. I mean, most people are like, no big deal. It's like, no, this, uh, uh, I don't like the way it ended. That meant a lot to me. I'm surprised he didn't take any jabs at uh, Josh Allen having one of the worst games any quarterback has had in like the last nine of 30. Yes, it was bad. <laughs> Meanwhile, Diggs' guy Stroud looked pretty good for the first three quarters. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, where are you on the Texans? Four and one, you know? The, no, I, I like them. Listen, they have all the components I like. Coach, quarterback, left tackle, edge rusher, star weapons. I do think C.J. Stroud yeah, 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 needs Mixon. I remember when they signed Mixon, you and I were like, this is a huge story. And it was kind of like Joe Mixon. Young quarterbacks, especially, by the way, Caleb Williams last two weekends had a run game. It's amazing. Caleb Williams looks more poised and under control. I like them a lot. I think they're a bit young to be a Super Bowl hoisting team in the Ooh. AFC. But if you look at this schedule, there's a lot. They got Tennessee still twice. Yeah, Patriots this week should be a dub. It feels a little like the Bengals team with Burrow that went to the Super Bowl. I mean, Colin, with yes, Nico yeah. Collins healthy. Uh, they were dominating the Bills early in that game. 14-3, like running away with it. Their point differential this year, despite their record, is minus 12. They need their run game. Yeah. Again, it's it, the, the foundation's there. Quarterback, coach, left tackle, edge rusher, weapons. That That's that's where the league starts. I, I do think, though, Stroud at this point, I mean, every, everybody needs a run game. By the way, if, if Joe Mixon was still a Bengal and they weren't so cheap, the Bengals wouldn't be as reliant on Burrow. They'd have better ball control, so their defense wouldn't be on the field. They're so Burrow-dominated in Jamar Chase. What's happened, it's not just defense. You you let Mixon go. You don't control the line of scrimmage in the clock. I mean, if you have an average defense, one of the ways to save it, keep them fresh, run game, right? Yeah. So Cincinnati is now all Burrow and Chase, no run game, and their defense is totally exposed. I will say Texans uh, Bills was was a crazy game, fun game, wild. It didn't feel like two teams that are contenders for the Super Bowl. I agree, totally. A lot of screw ups. A I mean, lot. McDermott's under fire right now for the way he handled. I'll the get end of that to game. that in a second. That was yeah, embarrassing. It, it, very bad. Uh, next up. Okay, so let's talk about the Houston Texans. I want to bring up the schedule and talk about this. Um, okay, in one minute. J Mac is saying the Houston Texans remind him of the Bengals who went to the Super Bowl. And next minute he's saying this doesn't feel, you know, when watching this game, it didn't feel like two contenders. Um, I get it, but also you had the Bengals versus the Ravens in this like epic back and forth. And yet now the Bengals are one and four. And I mean, it seems pretty far off that they have a chance to get to the Super Bowl. And yet that game, technically, if you didn't know their records, you would say these are this is the Super Bowl right here. Right. Obviously, I know it's two AFC teams, but you would be like, this is the Super Bowl right here. I mean, if that ends up if that would ended up being the Super Bowl game, you would I mean, that would be one of the most, you know, incredibly exciting Super Bowl games. So you can't always just go by that. The Kansas City Chiefs, um, you know, are en route to getting to another Super Bowl, and yet you can't say they looked like a Super Bowl team. And even last year when we know they obviously won the Super Bowl, they did not. There, you, there's not many games that season last year that you're like, this This right here, this looks like a Super Bowl team. You just you just don't necessarily see that. So you can't just go by that, you know, just a, a one-off game in that regard. But, um, yeah, the run game is still brutal. That was the first note that I have at the top of my list. 3.4 yards per carry. You know, it's a full yard below the average. And that's tough. That is a tough thing to do. That it is tough. Typically, you're hoping to get, you know, the average. You know, you want to get four and a half or so yards. And and I'm 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 such a stickler for those types of things. Um, because especially when you fall off with that, your run game becomes one, it's hard to trust. One, it's hard to feel good about calling it. Um, and it just it just 
it's impossible for it to not feel like an afterthought. Um, and I think that just really puts your team and your quarterback in a bad position, quite frankly. And it's like, I feel like I almost say this in every single video because it just, it just needs to be said again, you know, so much football is, is really not that complicated and being able to find a way to get the, the run game going in a positive direction. It's just crucial. I mean, it, it just, it just is undeniably crucial. And I think Stroud, right. He obviously had an imperfect game, right? One touchdown, um, an interception at a fumble, right? And so when you look at the box score, it doesn't really look like um, a super clean game, but it was better than it looks, quite frankly. Um, when you actually see some of the things that he did, some of the passes that he made, some of the moments that he had, obviously losing, uh, you know, your, your, your number one guy is, is not easy in the middle of the game, um, but I think they battled back. Um, yeah, if you, got the, if you got a better game from the Buffalo Bills, like this is where it's interesting, right? It's like, did the Buffalo Bills play really bad or did the Houston Texans defense shut them down? I think it was probably a combination, quite frankly, right? They, they were limited offensively, the Bills, because of their own injuries and stuff like that. Um, but also the Texans did a really good job. There was no one for Josh Allen to throw to, right? Like everything was so contested. Um, there was just no easy throws, no way for Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills, to get any type of momentum. And so the Texans do deserve um, a chunk of that credit. It's always interesting to try to figure out. And I know the fans of their own team always want all the credit, right? Um, and, and, and it's usually somewhere in the middle, quite frankly. Um, but... The other thing that I loved, um, and Dig, everyone knows, and you, you can't fool other players. Everyone in that locker room knows that Diggs wants to beat the Bills, right? He wants to, to win that game, and he wants to have a big game. In his mind, the dude wants to have three touchdowns and 200 yards, right? Like, he wants that badly. We know who Diggs is. But Bobby Slowick, you know, the OC, uh, CJ Stroud, and Diggs, they showed maturity, right? They didn't force him the ball. They didn't try to force a big game. He only had eight targets on the day, right? I mean, that's that's awesome. Uh, you, you have some wide receivers who are getting 15, 16 plus targets. And Diggs got eight. That That's really modest. And it probably would have been less if, less if they didn't lose uh, Nico. So um, I think that that shows tremendous maturity. And so, you know, Colin pointed out this is a too young of a team, but maybe on paper they're young but in reality I, I think they're wildly mature they've already had a high level of success making the playoffs last year winning a playoff game losing that playoff game which i talked about all really important those are all the steps to actually getting to the next step right is getting to the playoffs winning a playoff game even losing a playoff game know know what that's like what that feels like so they were able to really turbocharge their experience and maturity last year and that's also the benefit that I think of having a, a quarterback like a C.J. Stroud because he's such a calm quarterback. He's not emotional. So I just think it's uh, really, really great. Um, but yeah, the, I wanna, I, I, I'll throw in a negative. Uh, they had the opposing quarterback 9 for 30, right? Obviously terrible. And yet it still took a last second 59-yard field goal to win the game. Right. And, and again, I hold the Texans to a high standard because I do believe that they can be a true contender. So a game like this, I'm not just like, yeah, it was a good game. Hard fought win. Let's go Texans. I'm like, no, if, if we're, if, if we have true goals of achieving high levels in, in, in the NFL, in the AFC, right. Getting to an AFC championship game, beating the chiefs, beating the Ravens, you know, whoever it may be getting to the Super Bowl. Yeah, if you hold your oppo the opposing quarterback nine for thirty, you should be winning this game way more convincingly, right? Um, the fumble was just tough. One of those things happened. The interception was just a bad interception. Again, those things are going to happen. Every single quarterback is going to have a moment where you're just like, "Oh my god, I could have thrown better than that." That's just just the way it is. But um, yeah, you, you would have just liked them to be able to win this game more convincingly. It's one thing if it took a last-minute field goal, but you got the Bills' best shot. Then that would make sense, right? Then you would be like, yeah, Bills are a good team. Josh Allen is Josh Allen. What are you going to do? Sometimes these are the way these games go. But when you hold the quarterback for 9 for 30, I, almost, I have to keep reading it because I'm like, am I saying this right? This can't be right. But 9 for 30, it should not come down to a last-second field, a 59-yarder that, quite frankly, shouldn't have even happened. That's what they were trying to alluding to. Like, it was just terrible uh, game management. The, the clock should have run out, and then it should have gone to overtime. And then in overtime, who knows, 
right? I mean, seriously, who who really knows once you're in overtime? Who wins the coin toss and does someone get to break off for a run? You would think that the Texans would still win that game, but you just have no idea, right? You have, you have zero idea. Um, and so I think it's just, yeah, the, the Texans still do have work they have to get to. Um, I think when they do get the run game going, they'll be in a uh, better situation. But it's slightly unsettling because it does make you feel a little more fragile right now. And that's a justifiable feeling, quite frankly. But the hope is it's a long season. You still got plenty of weeks to kind of get situated to try to make a more resilient run game. To have CJ Shaw, remember, this is still his second year. He is still learning week to week to week. He is still growing week to week to week. Just because he's no longer a R rookie doesn't mean that he is still not very young and learning and growing. Like those things are still continuing to happen. So I really believe as this season goes on, he will also get better because this is something that I think a lot of people also don't um, really give enough credit to is that there's a couple things when you're a true season veteran, it takes less, right? As long as you're still young enough where your body's not like, oh, I got to loosen up my body. You can get into let's play right now, like very quickly. You, you, cause you've now been doing it for so long. You've played so much football. You've been in a week six, week seven, week three. You've been in those games so many times. You can't even remember anymore. Honestly, it just meshes together, right? Those guys just no ball. They don't have to play in the preseason. They don't even got to play in practice. They can just show up. They're ready to go, right? But when you're young, when you're a first, second, third year, whatever the cutoff may be, like it, it still takes you some time. Yeah, these guys have played a lot of football, but it's still, they had his rookie year and that takes a second to get situated. And now it's the second year and you're just like, right, it, it's not going exactly as you maybe even imagine, who, whatever it may be, whether it's really high or really low, it's going to take you a second to kind of get back into the swing of things. Any time off on anything. It always is going to take you a minute or two. And I know we're, we're going to be, you know, getting in there now, going into week six. And so it's not like it's week one or two, but it's still a process. It's still something that is, like I said, he's going to continue to get better. And therefore, this team will continue to get better, at least, again, from my viewpoint. Um, and of course, the exception to that is much older players whose body needs to kind of like, it takes them a while to like get back into it. Um, obviously, CJ Stroud and the Texans are not in that situation. So I imagine, I really, really do, that they are just going to continue to get better, continue to get, um, you know, buff out the edges. Uh, hopefully, they'll get healthier. And, you know, the hope is that they start to peak at the right time, right? That they start to kind of catch and um, kind of hit the ground running. Uh, at least that's what my hope is. Um, because they do, right? As they are right this second, if you could just magically drop them into the Super Bowl right now, you wouldn't say, oh yeah, Texans got this. You would say, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I, you know, I don't know. You, you wouldn't feel 100% confident. But to be fair, I don't know if there's really any team right now that I could feel 100% confident in. That seems to me right now, that seems to be the general opinion of this NFL season right now. This is not the season of juggernauts. This is the season of, I don't know, man. I've seen this team play great. I've seen this team play bad. This team keeps winning, but like, are they actually good? This team keeps losing, but like, they actually feel like they're significantly better than the team that keeps winning. Like, it's just, it's it's been a very bizarre season. It is not at all how I thought it was going to go, which is what makes this so fun. Um, but um, I think at this point, the Texans are on par with all these other teams, but I don't have the without a shadow of a doubt confidence of oh yeah you see the texans you better bring it i don't have that but like i said i don't have that about any team right now so it's going to be interesting if as these weeks go on if a team can start to separate if they can really start to show we're clearly better than everyone else we clearly got the better coaching we clearly got the better quarterback we got the better weapons right we're good so those are the little things that i'm looking for but those are just my thoughts i'd absolutely love to hear yours what do you guys all think about the Houston Texans, their 4-1 start, and really the rest of their schedule? I'm seeing, honestly, like another 11-12, uh, you know, in terms of wins. Not another 11 on top of it, but, you know, th them getting to 11-12 plus wins. Uh, would love to hear your thoughts on this one. Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment, so whether you agree with me or disagree with me. Either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I'd absolutely love to see you part of it. 
I'm going to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much and see you next time.